I know for many of you who are in the boatyard um, business are always interested. We are fully compliant with our boatyard general permit and we regularly meet our benchmarks there. We also are home to a volunteer force called uh, Harbor Patrol, and they pro provide vessel assistance to recreational boats within our, our, um, our waters. is 66 acres. We are served by a gobble crane with 140 ton lifting capacity. We have five log loaders. We have a loop rail on, on the track uh, that connects to both um, BNSF and Union Pacific service. Our labor is with ILWU Local 47, and we have a warehouse of 76,000 square feet that is just a mere 175 feet from the dock. We are also a green, um, green marine terminal, which is a third party certification program that we participate in. And in 2015, we installed a storm, um, state of the art stormwater treatment facility on our marine terminal. It was eventful getting it off the ground and uh, had some incidents in it. I am happy to report that we are in compliance with our little dark permit. We have uh, our last two quarters, we met all our benchmarks. We are still taking some corrective action on there, and we're still involved in some litigation on it, but we are trying it all in the right direction. We uh, adopted a new uh, marketing program for our terminal, and it is, uh, our tagline is Succeed with Us, Choose Olympia, and this is the really scary part of the program because I'm hoping the embedded video works. <laughs> so we'll give it a try. Okay. No. Okay, we're going to get up on the video. That's why this is very hard. We do have uh, real estate holdings in the three major cities in, in Thurston County, both uh, Lacey, Tumwater, and Olympia. In Tumwater, we have, uh, we're embarking on the um, new market now. Uh, nearly four, 1,400 acres in, in Tunnel Water, and about 550 acres of this will be included in that, the, the master Really innovative program that we're doing is alongside that master planning program, we are working with the city of Tunnel Water to do a habitat conservation plan for several endangered species in the area. There's a little thing called the Mazama Pocket Gilmore that if you've heard of it, as well as we have a horn lark and a butterfly there. So we're working with the city of uh, Tom Water to come up with this habitat conservation program that will set aside areas as, as reserves and have some advanced mitigation strategies and then be able to add some certainty into uh, the development as well as protection of, of habitat. This is, I, and I just have to, to brag on my staff a little bit, this is so innovative that the uh, Fish and Wildlife actually asked our Director of Environmental um, Programs to do the training for Fish and Wildlife on how to do a habitat conservation plan and how to do state court outreach on it. So we said, absolutely, we'd be happy to teach you how to do that. <laughs> Other things we have happening in this area, this is uh, really exciting for us. Uh, the Secretary of State received some funding authorization for them to build a new state archives building. 
the understanding of programming was the old one is really very problematic. It was like flooding basements and et cetera. And so uh, we are in negotiations with them now. We hope to locate them in Tumwater. This, uh, I think, will be quite an iconic building. It will hold things like the state constitution, paper records that we sent to the room. Uh, also be um, uh, really high in the traffic by visitors, which would be a lot of genealogy, genealogy researchers, et cetera. So we're looking forward to seeing those plans come, come together and we're excited about having them as a tenant in Tumwater. The port is committed to um, environmental restoration and dealing with some of the legacy pollutants that we have in the area. And to this end, we worked with the Department of Ecology and received um, some grant funding and were able to come up with a clean up action plan for our site in the East Bay area, which is down near the water. We did reach a remedial um, levels there for soil contamination, for loose of soils, and then we have a developer to work with, and they are now in the process. They've already done the pile driving. They're constructing a mixed-use facility, residential on top, retail on the um, level. And this is just a huge success story in, in my book. It's really kind of what I mean, the, the brownfield program is meant to be, is um, a building known up as um, platinum certified, so it's a real brownfield and greenfield success story. And we'll have some, some real uh, uh, the court purchased some light industrial manufacturing space out in the city of Lacey in 2016 and 2017, formed a partnership with the city of Lacey. We're now undergoing a market study to attract what we're calling uh, second phase businesses to see if there are innovative businesses that have kind of outgrown their, their garages or their kind of first um, commercial spaces and bring them in. We um, are hopeful that we can uh, attract some of the real innovators in the area. In that same vein, we're also working with the Lacey Makerspace. The Lacey Makerspace is located on St. Martin's University. And it is it will be a place that has things like 3 3D printers and laser cutters, a place for innovators to come and um, practice their ideas and their, their products with the hope that they will then be able to find something that they can take to market to develop a business plan and perhaps become a tenant of ours. And there are some there's just some cool stuff happening at that St. Martin's and ask me later about the people that are making artificial moon dust. It's like cool. <laughs> Doing is the uh, city of Olympia and um, the, the port, as well as our local, uh, regional wastewater treatment uh, facility. It's called Lot. It's Lacey, Olympia, Tumwater, and Thurston County. Um, are have completed a, um, um, a sea level rise adaptation plan, and so our commission is looking at adopting a resolution recognizing that. Soon, it is an adaptation plan, so it is looking at uh, downtown Olympia. Probably many of you are familiar that downtown Olympia was built on a lot of hill, and we are really seeing the effects of sea level rise. So, I think this is a super innovative approach that we have. I don't know many others, you know, in, in the state or even on the west coast where we have this type of interagency cooperation. So, we are uh, committed to being proactive on this, and we have. Um, several strategies that have been brought forward with um, different types of adaptations that, that we can do, and we we'll continue to work on with probably one of the most challenging issues of our time. We also have um, a draft sustainability plan that we, we've been working on, and we'll be bringing that um, out to at an operational level here later this year. And some really fun stuff. We've been Washington Regional Agricultural and Innovation Partner. That's a mouthful to say. Okay. Uh, we've contributed seventy-five thousand dollars towards this innovation park um, to develop a business plan, and then we've been part of a coordinated legislative uh, team with other stakeholders in Thurston County. And we're very pleased. There's many successes of, of that this session, but one of them is that we got an additional one point four million dollars towards this park. 
is actually going to be constructed by Flushing County EDC. They're the, that's the main uh, project manager on this, but the port will be still uh, looking to partner with them over the years and see if we can get this innovation park up and serving some of the farmers in Flushing County. We've also partnered with Washington State um, Extension and uh, on a grain feasibility study and including some trials of, of grains that we can grow in the region. And some of those grains have actually been brewed into beer and they will be uh, at, at, our, at the Tumwater Brew Fest, which is on Saturday, August 17th. And I will tell you, Thurston County very much likes its grains and they very much likes its beer and likes its Distilleries. This is a new um, uh, economic sector that there's a lot of focus on. The uh, South Puget Sound Community College has is um, has a program on distilling and craft brewing, and they have the first students in that, and we're really looking to develop that that sector of, of the economy. We also provide you know, like some, a number of public amenities for people to have access to the water that and doesn't just include the getting on boats. So we have our Port Plaza, which is uh, located on Left Inlet, which is home to several festivals. We have uh, the Olympia Group Fest. Yeah, I told you we like our friends and you. Um, and things like the Harbor Days. Uh, it has other private functions out there. Just a lot of foot traffic through people uh, enjoying sunsets, um, picnics and it's quite a, a nice public amenity. We're also partnering with the Squaxin Island tri Tribe and the Frank family, and we made our Peninsula <laughs> Trail, the Billy Frank Jr. Trail. It will have educational installations along, um, talking about the life of Billy Frank Jr., as well as the, the Squaxin Island Tribe, and so that project should be completed this year. <coughs> We are a, a county-wide port, and so as our tagline says, we serve. And in that, we have a small cities program, and we give out four grants to four small cities every every year for economic development activities. These activities have included everything from some road realignment to some bicycle parking areas and repair stations on the Tomino Yellow Trail to probably one of uh, the most famous, and if you haven't heard of it, it's um, uh, Bukoda's Boo Coda Festival, <laughs> which happens for all of October, and they have everything from like you know giant pumpkin patches to my favorite, what I'm looking forward to participating in is the, the casket races. races. <laughs> no, I'm going to call it a casket race. It was called the final. Pine box derby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it has really gotten a lot of national attention and brings thousands and thousands of visitors to this uh, small community, has been quite an economic driver for them. And we got our start with this small grant company about the Port of Olympia. We invest quite a bit into our outreach efforts. We have waterfront, working waterfront tours where we're taking um, numerous groups out through the the, uh, the months of the warm weather months, and they are incredibly popular with everything from school kids to uh, we just had the legal women voters out. You know, lot, lots of people like to attend these. We also have quite an outreach program into the junior high and high schools in our area, and we're really trying to get the word out that there are career tracks available in the port industries for, for kids, and it is it, it is really powerful stuff to watch you know, these. These kids come out and go, you mean I can work down here? <laughs> and, and it's really um, blossoming. We're, we're seeing a lot of connections made there. There's everything from, um, we work closely with the South Puget Sound Community College. We're also uh, often looking for programs that we can partner with them on, uh, as well as talk of other type of learning, uh, maritime academy uh, type services. So it's, it's a robust program. Our communication and outreach team is very, very busy. And last but certainly not least, and this started before I came on board, um, we are right now conducting our Vision 2050 program. We've done a lot of outreach into the, to the community to say, what would you like to, the board to be concentrating on for the next 30 years? 
And so uh, staff went out with a group of volunteers and did everything from attend Brewfest to a lot of other um, festivals. Those answers were always interesting. <laughs> but um, lots of focus groups, small group outreach. We have uh, surveys on our web page. We did a lot of mail out surveys and had over nearly 2,000 responses to that with over 10,000 individual comments. We then kind of, they sifted through all that, tried to make, make sense of them, grouped them into to themes, and then gave them to our 27 member task force, which is comprised of the city manager of Tumwater and the president of um, the South Sound Community College to Hershey Regional Planning Council, private um, company owners, just a, bit, a really broad array of stakeholders that have given very freely of their time and their expertise. They, they, they came up with suggested actions. We're now back out for public comment, going, okay, now all these ideas that we, we have sifted through, made them into these are things the court can focus on in the next 30 years. What are your priorities? That will be wrapping up here this month, and then we will uh, be sorting through them again and taking them back for presentation to the commission later in August. This document will really guide us in our strategic planning and our comprehensive scheme of further improvements and other long term planning for further decades to come. So, um, I, as the new executive director, am incredibly grateful to the, the work that was started before because it's like just a gift to me to say, hey, this is the, this is what the community is thinking and really what their priorities are. That's it.